Konami und Kojima Productions. Blue Point Games. Jawohl, es geht um ein Spiel von Hideo Kojima, das taktische Spionage-Action-Spiel Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Ihr seht schon, es handelt sich hier um die HD-Edition, liebe Freunde der Zeichenunterhaltung. Herzlich willkommen zu diesem ja, Eröffnungsvideo des Spiels. Ähm, erstmal vorab, ich benutze die HD-Edition, denn es gibt ein Problem. Meine PS2-Fassung des Spiels ist leider nicht mehr brauchbar. Muss man dazu schon sagen, damit ihr eben halt auch wisst, warum es so kommt. Ja, ähm, jetzt erstmal die Frage natürlich, warum beginne ich mit Metal Gear Solid 3 in der Metal Gear Reihe? Ich gehe nach, nach der Chronologik der Metal Gear Solid Reihe, also nicht mit Metal Gear 1 und 2 integriert, sondern mit der Metal Gear Solid Reihe. Und diese Metal Gear Solid Reihe beginnt mit Metal Gear Solid 3 im Jahre 64. Dort begann alles. Ja, deswegen beginne ich mit diesem Spiel. Das ist eins der beiden Videos, was ich heute hochlade. Bitte, liebe Freunde, entscheidet unter dem Video des Projektes, was ihr sehen wollt, entweder dieses hier oder das andere, dessen Titel ich jetzt nicht nenne, in Form eines Kommentars, den ihr darunter schreibt. Und ich werte das dann danach aus. Jetzt werde ich aber erstmal vorab etwas sagen zum Thema Darksiders. Einige wundern sich jetzt vielleicht, warum hat er jetzt in seinen letzten Ankündigungsvideos noch nichts zum Thema Darksiders gesagt. Ich möchte euch, euch, euch eigentlich sofort erklären, das Problem liegt ganz einfach darin, ich hatte keine Zeit für Darksiders irgendwas zu machen, denn ähm, Darksiders soll meine ganze Aufmerksamkeit bekommen, genauso wie es Suikoden 2 verdient, meine komplette Aufmerksamkeit zu bekommen, ähm, ohne immer halt große Einschränkungen. Deswegen werde ich erst eins von den beiden Rollen spielen, was gerade läuft, ähm, entweder Shadow Hearts from the New World oder Suikoden 2 beenden, bevor ich mit Darksiders anfange. Ich möchte eigentlich keine zwei Rollenspiele nebeneinander laufen haben. Das ist die einzige Begründung. Das gleiche liegt natürlich auch mit Galarian's Ash zusammen, wo ich wirklich die vorlesungsfreie Zeit für brauche. Keine Sorge, dieses Projekt kommt auch bald. Aber genug von den anderen Projekten gesprochen. Wir starten ein neues Spiel und wir spielen eigentlich, wir uns hat eigentlich mit mir... Jetzt geht es erstmal um die erste Frage. Ja, ähm, was werden wir jetzt nehmen? Also mir hat eigentlich... Es geht darum, gefällt mir Metal Gear Solid 1, der zweite Teil, doch vielleicht besser oder der dritte? Mir muss, ganz, muss ich ganz ehrlich sagen, hat der erste Teil von diesen hier am besten gefallen. Deswegen werden wir sagen, mir gefällt Metal Gear Solid 1. Wir werden auf ja, normaler Schwierigkeit spielen. Ich weiß, ich werde es bereuen, aber egal. Es ist ja schon lange her. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two. East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Konami präsentiert. Ein Hideo Kojima Spiel. David Hater als Snake. Susetta Minier, Laurie Allen, Neil Ross, Josh Keaton ebenfalls mit Synchronsprecherrollen, die ich leider nicht weiß. Jim Ward, Brian Cummings, James Mathis, Heather Halley. Und Jim Pedder. Es wird aber noch allerdings, glaube ich, alles eingeleuchtet, wer da kommt. Halb sechs morgens am 24. August 1964 in der Pakistan pakistanischen Luftära. Cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? 
approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. I've got some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well... About two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top-secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. Used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate-range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. 
But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my sight. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi palatins Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that, too, when he contacted us. Hmm. Klingt interessant. Das scheint also der Ur Ursprung zu sein von der ganzen Geschichte. Wundert euch nicht über die Toneinstellung jetzt am Anfang des Projektes, denn da wird sich auch noch einiges tun, da bin ich mir ziemlich sicher. Ich bin hier nur immer noch ein bisschen was am Ausprobieren, wie es eben halt am ehesten funktioniert, damit ich auch wirklich was höre. So, wir fliegen hier fleißig durch die Luft und mit R1 können wir mal hier so durchschauen durch die Perspektive. Das wird manchmal von Bedeutung sein. Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface to air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talon? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. 
Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. So. Interessant, interessant, was wir da alles so kennengelernt haben. Ich bin mal gespannt, wie viel wir davon anwenden müssen. Beziehungsweise, was davon alles zu sehen sein wird. Oh oh. Das sieht nicht gut aus durch so einen Busch. Oh nö. Ja, toll. Sehr gut hingekriegt, Junge. Na, ja, immerhin stylisch gelandet. Wow. Genau, all den Ballast erstmal abmachen. Oi. Snake, gesprochen von David Hater. Ein Meisterstück, was David da gemacht hat, muss man ganz ehrlich sagen. Tja. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful, you might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well... You better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. Okay, ich glaube jetzt langsam geht's endlich mal los. Ja, ihr habt schon gemerkt, sehr viel Vorgeplänkel. So, Moment, jetzt müssen wir erstmal schauen. Ich glaube nicht, dass wir da unseren Rucksack finden werden. Ja, ähm, wir werden natürlich jetzt erstmal uns den Rucksack holen. Das ist viel wichtiger, denn ohne Ausrüstung sind wir nackt. Wie unser Name schon sagt, Naked Snake. Ähm, ich sehe ich seh auch schon den Baum, wo wir hin müssen. Einmal hier drunter herkriechen und wieder hoch. Da hängt er ja. So, Aktionstaste ist, glaube ich, auf der Playstation 3. Genau der Dreieckknopf. Da klettern wir eben halt hoch. Sind schon da. Und jetzt heißt es Vorsicht. Vorsicht, Onkel Rabe. Nicht schon in der ersten Folge failen. Ja, ja. Perfekt. Und wir haben ihn. 
Wunderbar. Da muss man nämlich auch wieder die Dreiecktaste drücken, um runterzukommen. Wir haben ihn. Und wir kriegen wieder einen Anruf. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and US government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So, how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm Paramedic. Nice to oh. meet you. Oh! Medic. I'm a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. 
Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack. I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter. But you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake, the Cobra unit, a group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? 
The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Okay. Speak. Try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now. Okay, Leute, das war jetzt natürlich ein sehr langes Intro, leider sehr wenig Action vom Spiel, aber das könnt ihr natürlich anders haben, indem ihr einfach für diese Spielworte bzw. eure Stimme abgebt. Ähm, ich möchte jetzt noch dann von vornherein sagen, Leute, ihr müsst nicht nur für ein Spiel abstimmen. Wenn euch beide Spiele lieb sind, dürft ihr natürlich unter beiden auch einen Kommentar hinterlassen, keine Frage. Ähm, es ist nicht schlimm, wenn ihr euch dann für äh, ein anderes entscheidet. Das ist dann euch überlassen. Wenn ihr beide sehen wollt, auch okay. So, wir werden jetzt natürlich erstmal speichern, nach dem ganzen Hickhack. Wir speichern ein neues Spiel. Zack. Und... Feierabend für heute. Hey Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies, then? Of course! Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. Okay. Leute, jetzt war es das endgültig für dieses Video. Ich hoffe, ihr hattet Spaß. Ähm, Wenn es auch jetzt wirklich sehr wenig Action war. An dieser Stelle werde ich einen Schnitt setzen. Bis zum nächsten Mal bei einem Projekt des alten Raben. Bis dahin sprach der Ravenite nimmer mehr.